course, what is genius but an artificial construct in the guise of an empirical truth? These words seep of pretension, ostentatious rhetoric from a confused, sad little boy, but they are relevant nonetheless. In layman's terms, the statement would be translated as, intelligence is not measured by reality, but instead our own perception. In this world, this is a true statement, but I cannot say the same for the world of Jimmy Neutron. On Friday, December 21st, 2001, the world was graced with a CGI epic. Jimmy Neutron, boy genius. On the surface, it appears passe, outdated, cliche, and overstated, but this film is a lot deeper than you may take away from a casual viewing. Jimmy Neutron is a smart little boy. He spends his free time building whimsical inventions, but this alone isn't enough to garner him the respect respect of his classmates. Everybody seems to have a bone to pick with our protagonist. The parents, the teachers, the military, any and all authority figures cause conflict for Jimmy. He can do anything his heart desires, except ironically stay out past curfew. He rejects his parents' notions of structured life, of rules, and in an act of youthful expression, he sneaks out after dark to attend the opening of a local theme park. After this night of magical bliss, he and his friends make a wish on a shooting star. To paraphrase, his wish is along the lines of, My mom and Hugh are mean, I wish my parents were dead. In a stunning twist, unbeknownst to Jimmy, an alien race had just invaded Earth and kidnapped all the parents so they can eat them. Jimmy wakes up the next day and cannot find his parents. They are assumably dead. He does see a obviously forged message. All the other kids of Retroville have also found this same message, and Jimmy realizes his wish has come true. The poetic justice is unrivaled, but as we will soon learn, you should be careful what you wish for. The kids go insane. Anarchy reigns, degeneracy prevails, and the masses are lost in their own independence. After a night of sinful debauchery, the kids come to their senses. They are incapable of taking care of themselves. See, they want their parents back. This film is not about shooting stars and wishes, 2000s pop music or cartoon sex appeal. It's about fascism. The parents govern the children, the all-powerful force controlling the masses. In a moment of weakness, the blind sheeple fall to their basic instincts. Riot ensues, society collapses, chaos consumes all. After the damage is done, they realize their fatal mistake. They need a ruler. They need to be ruled. The Yolkian alien race is but an allegory for the anarchist revolutionaries that incite the initial conflict. Their work is appreciated at first, but soon it's revealed they are a plague. Jimmy and his pals are but pawns, whose childish ignorance is taken advantage of. Eventually, the masses come to their senses and brutally murder the insurgent forces. Authoritarian rule is established once more, and we are treated to pop tune riffs in good spirit. Critics agreed, this was the shit. The public was hungry for more, and their desires would soon be satiated. See, Jimmy Neutron was planned with both a movie and TV show in mind, and if the movie had the cultural significance of Vivaldi, the TV show would be a soul-coughing. While on the surface, it may appear as a simple children's cartoon, I can assure you this it is not. The show weaves a complex narrative as it follows Jimmy's battle with the capitalist, the elderly, and his own depraved urges. Economic inequality, the efficiency of the nuclear family, racism, all tackled with great care. He struggles to keep his own morality in check, often using his advanced knowledge to manipulate others to do his bidding, such as selling drugs to his classmates or killing hundreds in the name of good food service. His inventions cause the conflict and he quickly solves the problem. In this sense, he suffers from hero syndrome. Those that are afflicted with this create problems just for the self-satisfaction of resolving it. This is actually very common with arsonists, these tendencies we see explored throughout the series. And that got me thinking Maybe I'm missing something. Now, to explain what I mean, we have to go to a Season 1, Episode 5. We're treated to the world inside Carl's dream. Within this reconstruction, Carl shows envy of Jimmy's intelligence and places himself as the genius of Retroville. 
When questioned by the real Jimmy, he responds with immediate aggression. On a subconscious level, the resentment is likely held by many others, because think about it, Jimmy can do anything. All the problems the citizens of Retroville have are either caused or could be solved by the boy genius. Surely he'd be run out of town, murdered in the streets, but he isn't. This idea was explored in the episode It's a Good Life of the original Twilight Zone series. In this episode, an all-powerful kid can kill who whoever he wants with no effort, so everybody pretends to be nice to him, to stay on his good side. Jimmy's that kid. Why can he fly his rocket in restricted airspace with no repercussions? Well, what could the military even do to him? When he's bored, he creates life. He travels through time, manipulates the free will of others. He is an unstoppable force. And because of this, because he has no true challenge, he creates problems that only he can solve. Of course, what is genius but an artificial construct in the guise of an empirical truth? What he's saying here is, he is the empirical truth. He is God. He is the boy genius. This is Tyler of Knowledge Hub.